takes a little every day to go a long way. God's love never strayed from the day to day. So I pray, keep the faith and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, say Lord. It takes a little every day to go a long way. God's love never strayed from the day to day. So I pray, keep the faith and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, say Lord. It's the things you believe in that keep you striving Yo, I'm aiming for the top, so I keep on climbing Surviving, rising like the sun in the uh. east If the Lord be the light, let him shine Good morning, good morning everyone This is Dan Smith, I am your moderator today And I'm joined by Teresa I'm here with Jeremy J and Jeff Giant Johnson, back by popular demand. He's here as well. What's up, everybody? Hello. How are you? Yes. 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 It's a blessing and a blessing and a pleasure to have you guys here on this morning's Quad Squad, uh, where the Bible meets current events. We, you know, there's a lot of hot topics and a lot of interesting happenings. And um, right now, um, I know you guys are sitting in and substituting for people like uh, Stacy is in the hospital helping people uh, today, as always. Uh, Ivan is spreading the quad squad. He's doing uh, something in another area in church. And uh, Sean is still in Jamaica. Must be nice. Right? Living his life, living his Sean, <laughs> can Sean come? Sean, can you come back home? <laughs> he might be another Britney. He might be another Britney. <laughs> lost, 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 lost. So, so, so I, I, I'm so glad you guys are here. Uh, we're gonna have someone else join us shortly, but um, I just wanted people to meet the Browns. You know, meet <laughs> the Browns. Brown. Come on in. Don't you they have know? a TV show? When there was a TV series? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not getting the checks. No. I'm no. not getting the checks. There you go. We took y'all show. So, 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 um, you guys have a nice ministry, um, that is called the bridge. And I just want you guys to kind of, uh, tell our viewers and listeners just a little bit about it. And, um, then you guys can introduce our online viewing guests and give them some directions and instructions because they're coming in fast and furious. <laughs> well, um, the bridge is about, um, commitment. Uh, marriage and community to try to interlock those two things and in interlock those three things because a lot of times it's in the church it's very difficult to find resources when you're courting of like what you should do how you should do it like a road map of any kind to be able to navigate to marriage or you know um, even even if you are married to be able to navigate you know how to stay <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of people leave now so that's what the bridge is about. It's about building a community of people who believe in the commitment, uh, uh, the courtship, the marriage, and the community that it takes to, to keep a covenant going. All right. So, Amen. Teresa, take us to the bridge. Take us to the bridge. All right. So, yeah. So, just like as my husband said, um, when we were courting, there wasn't much for us. <laughs> we, we would go to a lot of the uh, marriage workshops that we saw because we wanted to make sure that we had enough information and prepared before we decided to get married. So the mm -hmm. bridge is literally bridging the gap between I and I do. So all we do is facilitate opportunities for um, dating couples, courting couples, married couples, and even singles who are desiring to be in healthy relationships to be able to um, learn more about the about relationships, to be able to have opportunities to link up with other people who are, you know, mm -hmm. in the same area so that mm -hmm. because we need each other in this whole process. So with the bridge, we wanted to kind of close that gap between being single and and courting is still single until you sign on that dotted line you are still single so to bridge the gap between being a single person and coming together in marriage wow. that that is great we need more ministries like that i'm glad a lot of churches are encouraging these ministries so people can find their gifts their spiritual gifts and and, and help the community so can you guys uh welcome our online guests and viewers and give them some instructions all right go ahead jay Oh, um, well, you guys got a tag team. <laughs> as, as, I'll go first. And, you know, my wife is the better talker. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, well, my wife will give you all the directions to, <laughs> to be able to find the bridge. 
<laughs> all right. So what I'm about to do right now, we want to just welcome all our online guests. Those of you that are faithful and true, those of you that are new, thank you for joining us. This is the Quad Squad channel. Now I'm going to send a link in the chat. So everyone who's there, all these names I see popping up, I'm going to send a link in the chat. Mm -hmm. Click the link and subscribe so that you will always be a step ahead mm -hmm. as to what is going on with the Quad Squad. Yeah. And please feel be better, Carmen. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and please be sure to subscribe on the YouTube page as well. Yes, I please just go. dropped the link in the chat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's free. You ain't got to do nothing, people. Just hit the share button. <laughs> That's very important these days. Yeah. With uh, the man. Man. People want to know you got it free. Get it free. <laughs> and also, um, you see this bookmark? Study to show thyself approved unto God. Second yes. Timothy 2. Uh, 15. Uh, you can get one of these. You can get one of these. Put in your, in, in your lesson study, you know, how, how, how you, um, you know, do your thing. You can see some of the quad squad and then you got the nice cartoon over, over there. Um, but also if you want that or you want I'm missing. To I'm you, missing from the. I'm missing from. The oh, movie. you're missing. <laughs> I'm missing. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're doing another one called quad squad subs. <laughs> That's what she was. Permit is up. And guess. No, quad squad guess. Mm, yes, okay. we have guess. Thank you. Yes. And, and it's on, and type this in the chat, uh, Teresa or I'm, Jay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Quad squad 249 at gmail.com. Quad squad, no space, 249 at gmail.com. So you can get the 411 on when you put 249 in. Mm -hmm. Sister Crockett is in the house. All right. Inez Brown. Yes. Veronica Williams. Hey, what's up, son, son? All the way from England. And I just want to thank all of our streaming networks that's uh, put it out there. We're being uh, shown. Can you believe we're being shown in, in Europe, in the U.K.? Oh, wow, right. it's wow. amazing, amazing. As a matter of fact, I think I got a little something, something to show you guys. Yeah, we're gonna jump to the lesson study in a minute, too. So here we go. Uh, Life Radio UK. We're on over there um at 2 p.m., I believe, their time. And um, it's just it's a blessing. Sun 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 says, uh how many of you watched the Commonwealth opening ceremony? It was loaded with illumination illustrations. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> Mount Calvary. All right. Yes. Okay. Mount Calvary Church is in the house. Yes. Okay. Is that the link? Yeah, that's the link. Look at that. Look at that. Put that link up in there. Just click it. Click it. <laughs> If, if you click it, you won't get a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to take your, 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 your. Uh, that, that's you, Jeff. You're the joke man. You Thank know. you, sir. Leave that alone. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> Thank you. Leave that alone. <laughs> so, hey, Angela, what's up? What's up? Angela's in the house. So here we go. We're gonna jump into it. Um, you guys have your Bibles and stuff because, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. This study, this this Bible study has been really interesting and just deep and hot and hot and deep. And it's, you know, struggles and crucibles. Can you say that now, Jeff? Cruci crucibles. 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 Yes, the crucibles. crucibles. You know, the things that we go through in life. So this is, you know, it's trials and suffering, trials and suffering. So. Um, Teresa, could you read Colossians 1, 28 and 29? All righty. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Um, and 29, to this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Mm. Okay. You know, I had this, 
you know, we, we, we split this up in three parts. So the first part I call the struggle is real. Mm-hmm. Life struggle is real. It's mm-hmm. real. So after reading what you just read, and, you know, I know you probably didn't have a little time to ponder it because uh, this question was going to some someone else. But, you know, you're a good sport. <laughs> what is the role of our wills and willpower in the battle with self and sin? Anytime I think about like the fruit of the spirit, ain't the one fruit that um, I'm always like feeling the most guilty about is self-control <laughs> because our willpower really carries us to stay on the right path of what is right of whatever task we have, of whatever um, mission that there is, the willpower keeps us going beyond what our flesh wants to do. Um, A lot of times we rely on our own strength to do things. Um, Mm -hmm. When we think of willpower, especially with the way that we discuss willpower, we don't think of an, an outside entity. We just think of our own self being able to go the distance or being able to accomplish the task. Um, but I also think about the word will, and that has to do with a desire to accomplish that task. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times our desires may not match up with how we feel about the task, but when you have like that, that real desire to do that thing or to accomplish that task, then comes the power to be able to go the distance. Mm, Going the distance. Want to give a shout out to uh, someone else from England, uh, Rachel Jerome Graham. All right. All the way from London. What's up, my sister? So, yeah, you know, the struggle is real and and, and we're struggling uh, with our willpower. And, and, and Jeremy, yeah, I, I have this. This next question is coming to you. Uh, how does uh, spiritual change occur in the life of a Christian? Enabling an individual to mature through life's hard times and not be overwhelmed by them. So, you know, is is there some uh, spiritual change that occurred because of the problems we face? Yes. Um, a lot of, well, in, in facing trials and facing tribulations, if we were to look at Christ when he was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, the maturity happened when he was able to say no to temptation. And mm-hmm. so... That that is how we grow spiritually is being able to say no to the very thing that our flesh will have us say yes to, and see exercising the muscle of yes towards the right and no towards the wrong, and it's not because you have a a a, a, a yearning per se mm-hmm. for the wrong, but it is you are tempted like every and anybody else, and so the maturity occurs when yes feels more right than no. Mm. So, so you talking know. about exercising a muscle of yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And you grow that way. And the uh, less the, 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 the less you give in, the more you grow. The less you give in, the more you grow. Okay. Mm. So Mr. Jeff, Mr. Yes. Jeff. So um in John 16, 13, mm-hmm. Jesus says, the scripture says. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. Yes. Although the spirit of truth doesn't directly uh, tell us what to do, but it guides us when we listen. We talked about that last time. You you know, the Holy Spirit tapping us on the shoulder. You know, you say, yeah, God talked to me in the morning time. So mm-hmm. um, what choices, Jeff, are you making with your free will, with your free will, that the spirit would say, that's right, Jeff. You're doing a good job, Jeff. That a boy, Jeff. Way to go, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And hello, everyone from England. I'm going to talk to you <laughs> in my England across the pond. Oh, voice. please don't. Please don't. Okay. I, I didn't know no more words anyway. So, <laughs> oh. so the truth. So we're talking about the spirit of truth. Mm-hmm. All right. And it's when it's quiet. Now, when we're dealing with the spirit of truth, the truth is almost like a decision 
that we make and mm. making that decision, you will understand if it's true or not. You will understand if it's true or not through that decision that you made. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it works in all your experiences, in all your endeavors. When you understand that that truth and the decisions that you're making, they go in hand in hand. So my thing is the decisions that you make will always bring about that truth that has been made. That's it, The truth is there. Mm -hmm. The truth is there. But it's your decision. So, make, so, so you're saying like that still small voice that may yes. say, "Don't do that." Right, it's with you all the time. Yes, and, and that you gotta yes. listen to that. Yeah. So that's why I asked the question, Jeff. You know, do, do you do you listen to that? <clears throat> that's so we can say, "Jeff, you did. That's a good decision." You, you know what? And it's it go both ways, ladies and gentlemen. It go both ways. Mm. It go both ways. How? What you do you can, mean? You can listen to it. And do the right thing, or that decision you can make may 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 cause you doing something wrong, doing mm -hmm. something else. So that truth that you have, because the decisions you make is in your life, it's life decisions. So if you make that decision for truth, what we're talking about, that you hear that voice, yes, and you there are also another decision you can make, and it's like, uh oh. You have to suffer some consequences. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Mm. Consequences, yeah. consequences. There's always consequences. Absolutely. So, so here we go. We're, we're about to uh, go into our first uh, discussion topic. Hmm. Brittany Griner. You guys know about Brittany Griner, right? Oh. Yeah. She got sentenced to 9.5 years. Too long. Hard freaking labor, hard mm -hmm. labor in Russia. You know, this is after she confessed, saying, you know, I, I know what well, you know, I, I I you know, this is wrong. I didn't mean for this to happen. Sorry, you know, I I, I set a bad example. Uh, sorry for what I did. Do you think that she uh didn't listen to that little voice of truth? Damn. First part, first part. Second part, you think the sentence was too hard? Damn. Could you yeah, explain yeah. how much she had? See, that's what people don't understand. How much did she have? What do you mean? How, how, how much? How much? Oh, how much we? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it only it only says she just had like a, a vape or something or, or it was like a a cannabis something it wasn't it wasn't a lot whatever it was it wasn't a lot mm -hmm. in in layman terms she only had a joint she yeah. had a joint that's it that's all she had <laughs> mm -hmm. okay now we can take it from there because we need to understand how much she had because they said she was a <laughs> she was trafficking they made it seem that she was trafficking yeah, like she was trafficking <laughs> <laughs> and she had this yeah. So well, go wasn't ahead. she going back to the states? Like my question was, she was going back home. So how did she? Like how come nobody stopped her? Right, right. It, 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 and the thing is, you know what? What uh, Maya brought out. Maya brought a good point. Um, this is Russia. You know. Yeah. Um, uh oh. Can, 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 oh, there's Karen. Hey, hey everybody. Karen. <laughs> She's back. She's back. I'm She's here at Eight Convention. How you doing, Karen? She came back on the weed part, huh? She came back. Somebody said weed. Somebody said weed. Somebody said weed. <laughs> Across the pond, some weed. Now that brings me back to my, you know. What? Oh, you know. Oh no, we don't know, Teresa. That's, no, that's, no, 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 no. I, I stopped right there. No, I, it doesn't bring me back anywhere. Okay. Well, all right, Brittany Griner. But anyway, so, 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 yes, yeah, so. I like what Maya was saying. This isn't this isn't the United States, but you know, uh, they said in other incidences they only gave sentence like five years or less or probation her first time. So you you know, do you think, Karen, that this was right, fair, or just crazy? Just because I've been or, following, or using it? yeah, yeah. It's it's like you said they're using it. You know, I've been following this case regardless of what you feel like she did or shouldn't have done 
you know, it's clear. I mean, I look to see she was actually in her off season from the WNBA, NBA, W, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah uh, WNBA. playing for Russia. Yeah. So it wasn't like she was even a tourist. They kind of put it out like she was a tourist and she's maladaptive and she's been doing these things. No, she was playing for their entertainment. And they nabbed her because, you know, politically expedient. So mm-hmm. I felt kind of bad. I knew they were going to do something. It's all about a prisoner swap. They're trying to get that other guy who's like a mm-hmm. gun dealer and get him, you know, swap for her who's done nothing. You know, oh, it's oh. just a ploy of the evil state over there of affairs. She, uh, you know, go, yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Well, she, she, she is simply wrong place, wrong time. Mm. And that's that's really what it is because um, in, here in the states we stop a lot of Russian uh, people from playing and competing in certain things and diff- all around the world, you know. So out of retaliation, they're going to use uh, our athletes or anyone we had over there, um, including our journalists and all those type of people. They're going to use that as leverage, and that's simply what they're trying to do: use it as leverage. Uh, I saw one offer, real trader for Zelensky. I was like, y'all, wow. That is and so that, that's what they're trying to do. Okay, let, let, let's get some clarification here. I'm, you know, we call you Jeremiah. That's your that's your proper name. Yeah, yeah. We call we say Jeremy, because that's the you know your that's loving right. beloved name. Yeah. And then there's some people who call you Jay. Yeah, we so we I'm getting some texts over here. <laughs> I'm like, look, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> The man Angela? know who he is. <laughs> What's your name? I'm to call you today. Jeremiah? <laughs> Jeremiah all day. Okay, all right. So put that on your name in the little box down there. <laughs> that is his name. And that's how he <laughs> that's his name. So just y'all, accept it. Y'all know black parents. They always want to be unique. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to try something different. Okay. All right, Jay. How's that? How's that, Jay? That'll work. That'll work, too. Jay is fine for Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, so as you were saying, um, oh, okay, I, let, let me see. Sandy says, the point you are avoiding is this is a Russian political move. Mm-hmm. She had 0.7 grams of oil. That's Only it. one person holds all the cards, and that is Putin. Mm-hmm. He has the final decision. Yep. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Number one, she been over there playing over there for seven years. Mm-hmm. Okay. She played mm-hmm. there for seven years. Mm-hmm. She know that place. They mm-hmm. know her. Yeah. It ain't like the first time she brought that over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. If she been over there seven years, she just don't smoke and do whatever she do in America and go over there. It's a part of her. So they mm-hmm. knew that. It's just the point that we are in war. They was mad what we did with Ukraine by helping them out. And they said, you know what? We're going to use her. And this is how the Mm -hmm. devil uses it. They paid her money and they gave her whatever she wanted. But when it's time for them to make a call, they said, we're going to get her. And they Mm. got her knowing how much she brought to their country by playing ball. But guess what? They still said, we're going to get her. And we're going to use her against her own people. Mm-hmm. They know she smoked. They know she did it. She's been there doing it for seven years. Mm-hmm. She was able to get in the country with it. Like, that's my thing. I was able to get in the country with it. But then you're going to stop me on my way out all of a sudden? No. Yes. Mm-hmm. They knew exactly what they was doing and how they do it. And yes, she is being used mm-hmm. as a pawn. Mm-hmm. A pawn, pawn, pawn. You know, it's interesting. You know, uh, it's just... Creeping compromise, things that happen to us, you know, um, you just it's it's a bad situation all around. But uh, Jeff, last question about this to you. Um, do you think that she may have had a come to Jesus moment? Oh, yes. You know, when she was in that little cage and said, hey, <laughs> oh. this is real. Oh, yes. Yes. And let me tell you, it's just not only her. It's anybody that's in that cage. Anybody mm-hmm. has anybody has been in any type of circumstances, and now they have to sit there and look and think about what just happened. Mm-hmm. Yes, she had a serious come to Jesus me. She started talking, seeing the pictures of her teammates. She had a picture of her wife. She had a picture. She talked about 
Yes, she even admitted, admitted that she was wrong and she did it and made it, you know, said, I didn't know. That come to Jesus meeting comes when you in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's not that's not solitary confinement in prison. That could be solitary confinement in your own home, mm. in your closet, right now, you're in your own preach. space. All right. In your own space. Your solitary confinement, and you can have a come to Jesus meeting just then. Because guess what? Truth mm. and the Holy Spirit will put that on your mind and conscience when you by yourself and you have no one else around. Come to Jesus meaning is always there. Mm. Wow. You know, um uh, preach, ooh. Jeffrey. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, to, I gotta say, I like two, these things. They just turn me on. I'll be ready. <laughs> to two, two wrongs don't make it right. Right. You know what? 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 Pooh did that ain't right. What she did that ain't right. But that's what right. she's been doing it. it. How would she know it's not right? She's been doing it for seven years. Yeah. But that's, that also reminds you that you cannot be too comfortable. You there are still you a foreigner right. in yeah. their land. You are a foreigner. Yes. Like, you cannot be yeah. comfortable. Yes, yes. Yeah. We, yeah, you, can't, you can't get relaxed. You can't get yeah. relaxed. And you I, know, um, the, the, no. like, the devil is around seeking whom he may devour. He wants to tear us down. But you know, hey, we just pray for her. We pray that I'm sure mm -hmm. she'll eventually come home come back, you know, but sometimes God, you know, when we're going through these crucibles, God kind of knocks us off this uh, pedestal that we have of ourselves. I remember Sean saying, you know, uh, we look in the mirror and we see ourselves a certain way and God has to crucible us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can say that. The Holy Spirit in hard places is going to give birth to your real character. Yeah, Ooh. Ooh. That, say that again. Say that again, Jeff. Slow down, slow down, Jeremiah. I gotta, I gotta Jeremiah. highlight you. On this. Jeremy, Jeremiah, Jimmy, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah. Don't talk about me like that. No, Jimmy, no, Jeremiah, right. whoever you are, say that I again. Said, um, I said the Holy Spirit in hard places give birth to your real character, and uh, and a lot of us don't know really who we are until we're by ourselves having to face that opposition alone. When you read the word of God, you see Job, you see Jeremiah, you even see Christ. When he was in that garden of Gethsemane, let this bitter cup pass from me. And God didn't even answer. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times we already know uh, where we're going, why we're going. But then when we actually have to face what it is and when it's time to go through, we we want to change our minds. But mm -hmm. however, it's, it's right before us. So your real character, whether or not you're going to run or walk, is, is really going to be shown in those times. And... I, you know, I have much, you know, I, I you know, have much prayer for her because in this life, we do tend to get comfortable, even as believers. Just as sure as she got comfortable in any in enemy territory, Russia, we get comfortable here in this life. And we get to thinking things won't change. And the next thing you know, we got a war in Ukraine. We get to thinking things won't change. And then we have certain groups thinking our existence may be a problem. We think mm. things. We, we've been alive 30, 40, 50 years, and we think we've seen it all. But then year 55, you may see something new that you haven't seen. Whoa. Just, just because there's nothing new under the sun don't mean it ain't new to you. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> and that's the reality of a believer and anybody that's in this so world. That's true. You know, so we're facing a time where there is change. And so these things aren't new to God, but they're new to us. And so our reaction to the circumstance is is has to be to put our faith in God because He already knows the answer to what we're experiencing mm. because He's outside of time. He's seen everything. Ooh, you know get deep him. now. You get you getting that philosophical. He's outside of time and space. I don't know who's talking. Jeremy, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jimmy, James. Who, who is this man? We we go through him. That's right. That's right. That's right. On the other hand, are experiencing a moment that is inside of time while he's being omnipotent and looking at our life outside of time and doing whatever it is necessary in our lives to make sure we get home to him. And even if that means going through tough times, All right. I want you here with me for eternity. So what I'm going to do is that while you're in this time, I'm going to make sure that I get your attention with the Holy Spirit by any means necessary. And mm. you, you guys got giving some great comments, boy. I wish I could read them all, but y'all read them because they're good. We gotta keep moving. Ooh, there's some good comments. A lot, a lot of people say, "Well, for black folks, stay out of Russia." 
<laughs> new, 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 new meaning of black hey, Russia. Man. Hey, man. <laughs> Hey, my, my sister was over there. It was okay, but she did say that there were some differences. Yeah, you you uh, <laughs> you American everywhere, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you, That's you right. Black That's right. You black American here. Everywhere else, I know you you're American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just tough because um, you know, three angels broadcasting, for example, has a huge media center there that's been operating successfully for over 20 years no problems yeah. but it's the governments and you just don't know you don't know at what time with some of these dictatorial governments are just going to snatch you That's away right. and you yeah. talk about the crucible so i'm going to tell you real quick yesterday i've been seeing this little light on my car that said go check service you all know i have an electric car so where am i going to go with it but i'm operating like a gas car i get around like changing my oil i'll get around i get around to it so what the lord have to do flat tire I'm charging my car. I mean, a flat as a pancake tire. I had to lift two miles over to the dealership and they go, yeah, we're going to service you. So like you said, Jeremiah, sometimes God has to pause us to be able to get our attention and take us through, allow, I wouldn't say God didn't always put us through, but sometimes he allows the normal circumstances of life that are going to happen anyway to be able to bring some good out of this. I'm sure that when this woman comes out of that prison, she's going to have something to say to somebody else about bringing yeah. things in. She'll, she'll have something to say. Uh, and hopefully she would have had an opportunity um, to get closer to her maker in the process Amen. of that, to understand yes. some things. Uh, uh, Brandon Ford says, the Holy Spirit in hard places gives birth to real character. That's taken from Jeremiah Jeremiah. <laughs> that Jeremiah? That hey, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. <laughs> He's still right. He's still right prophecy. Still <laughs> Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah we're laying it down. <laughs> so 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 here we go. We we gonna um my just all all over the place, boys. My I, we love your comments, yeah. my <laughs> yeah. so here we go. We're moving on to our next part where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's there's a way. Jer Jeremiah, here we go. The question is to you. Could you read Colossians 1, 28 and 29? Yes. Uh, let me put it up right here. Uh, Again. Hmm. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Mm -hmm. From what you read, it sounds like as though uh, Christ didn't expect us to win the struggle by ourselves. No, no he did not. Um, it reminds me of another scripture, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. And as we go through life and temptation, as you mm -hmm. see with, with Christ, in his weakness, he leaned on the word. Mm -hmm. In his temptation, he leaned on the word. You have to lean on what God has already told you so that what you know can carry you through to what you believe. And that, and that is how we get through. So we were never designed to overcome by ourselves. Even Adam, we were never designed to overcome by ourselves. We were, we were designed and, and made and fearfully and wonderfully made to always be in sync with him. Our strength mm. is him. He's our source. Mm -hmm. so without him, you know, we can do things, but we can't really become things. We can't really become who we're supposed to be. And so at no point are you supposed to ever believe in yourself. You're supposed to believe in God and whatever God say about you, then you take that and you believe in that. And then you walk that out. But we uh, have a tendency to deceive ourselves. Mm. And we have yeah. to lean on him because who who we think we are versus who he made us to be will always conflict. And 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 adversity shows which one is actually real. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. It, the, when the rubber meets the road, that's where the character comes out. Yeah. So Karen, is there something to the saying uh God help those who help themselves? Mm. And, and what does that mean and look like to you? Uh what it is God that works within us supposed to will and to do of his good pleasure. We have the control. We have the power of our will. Are we willing 
that's our part, just to open up our hearts and say, are we willing to allow God to do his will within us? And yeah, yeah, the gospel. yeah. Just, just, just a moment. We, we know you're in, a, in a, another environment, mm -hmm. but give us the, the, the Karen that we know, the animated <laughs> Karen. That don't be so reserved because of the okay, right. Right. I got to figure out. Okay. Come on, now. Oh, okay. Come on, now. Cool. Be you. She's in a cool boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the pious and this is your. Be you. Come on, right, now. Right, right. You know, right. I'm trying to talk too loud. But I have to, they're not meeting. They're meeting way on the other side. So I can't talk go. to you myself. You okay. So <laughs> God works within us. And our part is to be willing. We have an opportunity while we're here on earth to perfect our characters, to be able to look at the things like what Jeremiah was saying, the Holy Spirit is showing within us. And Jeffrey is saying, Teresa is saying, y'all all saying, mm -hmm. look within us. And God will show us like a mirror. You know, that's why Paul says, I see us through a glass dimly and then I'll see face to face. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't always see everything I'm supposed to see. And then there has to do like what Jeremiah was saying about God's design for us. There's a popular gospel song that says, I am what God designed me to be. And that's, we need to know who we are. If mm -hmm. we understand who we are, then we can work within the will of God. So we have a part to play. There is no just blanket, you know, we're not robots. God doesn't. Oh, I was watching this TV show with my daughter, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Okay, all three seasons with 22 episodes for everyone. And so I was like building up, building up for when the Avatar gets to meet the, the firebender, Lord of the firebender, right? And he's been struggling. He's been trying to learn how earth bending. He's been trying to do air bending. He's been trying to do water bending. And he's trying to do fire bending. At the very end of it, after me struggling through three seasons and 22 episodes each, my entire vacation in D.C., what does the dude do at the very end? He, he gets into this ball, and he just kind of swirls all around with all the powers, and then he takes his finger and puts it on the earthbender, the Lord, uh, the firebender Lord's mm -hmm. head, and make him do it. I'm like, that ain't it? Really? I said, I for that. <laughs> You're going to make him? We could have done that at the very beginning of the first show. Okay, so no, God does not take his finger and make you do anything. Yeah, that's that is right. our will. He does not make you. He Amen. gives you opportunity. He shows you he's a good salesman. This is the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. You turn the life over this window, number two. She's okay, bad. Over here. What's She's that? Bad. Oh, you took the wrong Real Karen's here. Come on over here. Karen's here. Okay, but he don't take no finger and make you do nothing. Okay, God does not do that. So that is our part. It's like, okay, I I see this. This look really, really good. I don't even know how it works. Like when my son got and told me, you need electric car. I'm out. I don't really know how it works. I'll come and show you. Okay, but I was willing. I signed mm -hmm. the paper and paid the willing. That's all God is saying. He Amen. paid everything. Sign the paper. Say, I'm willing. I don't even know what it's all involved, but I want to take it. I Sign me up for the yeah. Christian Jubilee. <laughs> Write my name on the roll. All right, I'm now. Gonna say, we could go with the song. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. I, I do care. We're just like, uh, hold, hold them back. Hold them back. Right. Hold them back. Thank you, you. <laughs> So, so, Mr. Jeff, I'm coming to you with this. Um, in Colossians, again, 129, Paul sees his relationship with God. If this effort, labor, it's like it's an effort, labor. And the Greek means to grow weary to the point of exhaustion. It was used um, in athletes as they train. It, it's seen in athletes as they train. You train and work out every morning. Every morning we can see you working out. Come on now. Come on now. You're doing your thing. <laughs> you know? So <clears throat> what motivates you? What's your motivation when you're not feeling like when you're not feeling up to it, like when you don't want to work up? So, I mean, because people don't know you're really dedicated to uh, working out and staying in shape. Yeah. What's your motivation? <laughs> I'll tell you my motivation. <laughs> my motivation, people, is people. When people call and tell me, I have a young lady right here. Her name is Lisa. She's a part of it. My motivation is when I get 
hi, I get so much inspiration when I am dealing with people, with you guys. And mm. the excitement that I have with inside myself, it overwhelms because I know you are being motivated by what I'm doing. So every morning I get up, I get up not just for me anymore. I get up because I know you wanting this. And I have so many, <laughs> I just, I hate to say this. I got people in the bed while I'm working out. They call me, they see me and say, Jeff, oh, you was good this morning. Man, you motivate me while I'm in the bed. <laughs> He's not doing nothing. He's not doing nothing. But guess what? They like the motivation. They come at 617 every morning. Mm -hmm. They tune in to watch me just motivate, just ready, and we're doing it every morning. So I get inspired. I get my inspiration. I get my truth from helping and watching people that come back reciprocated to me and say, hey, mm. I enjoy. And Lisa, she just said this, this Friday, she said, thank you so very much for motivating me to just do it, to come on and just be a part. I love the energy. And when that happened, guess what it does to me? It makes me want to get up and just keep doing it because mm. I know that I am affecting someone's life yes. that's laying in the bed <laughs> or <laughs> working out with me. And we just have a good eye. So my motivation comes from you, from mm. folk. And yes, and it's 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 just it's like a high man that just never go down because I'm I'm actually um, um, helping you. Maybe you, you know, you really need, and a lot of folks need to lose weight. A mm -hmm. lot of folks need to exercise. And my sister, she's a little overweight, but you know what I said? She's like, baby, I'm doing it. I'm saying, look, just do something. Yes. As long as you tune in, as long as you get in when it's over, just do it. And mm -hmm. guess what? A lot of folks are doing something. They may not can keep all the way up, but guess what? They do it. And, and, and we're not talking about young people, Dan. I got folks 70, 80. You hear me? I'm not talking about this. They are older, and I'm so glad because I'm older. So I got a mature crowd, and they love it. Mm -hmm. They love the motivation and encouragement. Well, we want the young people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I want the young people too. Whoever, whoever will come, and guess what <laughs> happened? You're gonna see some. You, you know, I, I like what Brandon uh, said here. I noticed that when motivation is gone, the the discipline, strength of your routine must take over wow that is so true that is so true wow read what lisa said right there there she go there she go okay yeah lisa yep yep it really is a great workout every single week day she said that six seventeen not six fifteen jeff but anyway <laughs> okay, 617, 615. Okay, rolling minutes. That's all it's all good. You know, you 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 all we all need the fact checkers. We all need the fact checkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Teresa, here we go. Because you got you're a you're a mental health therapist. Um and 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 this this we're talking about something here that deals with how we feel and all of that. So um I, I, I want to ask you this. One of the greatest enemies of our wills, our willpower, is our own feelings. Mm -hmm. mm. Our own feelings. In Jeremiah <laughs> 1 19, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, how can I know if I am uh, basing my choices? on feelings, emotions, or desire, as opposed to the word of God. I know that's a lot, but that's why you're here. <laughs> so our feelings always um, satisfy our flesh and never really um, God or our mission. Um, a lot of times when we talk about even giving, we always say, God loves a cheerful giver. And we insert that feeling in there. A lot of times when we Think about, okay, am I really leaning on God's will or am I just doing what I feel? You know, when you're just leaning on how you feel 
versus doing the right thing. There are many of us that don't feel like going to work, that don't feel like getting the lesson plan done or giving our best um, um, lesson for the students or whatever the job may be. There are a lot of us that don't feel like doing anything. But you, for those of us that have a conscience, uh -huh. there's always that, you know, that still small voice, that feeling of guilt that lets that reminds me like hey okay you know this is not the right thing to do but sometimes our feelings are just so strong that we feel like okay well let me just satisfy my feelings right now and then next time I'll do better or next time I'll be stronger or next time but next time never really comes and so having that that um conviction of I'm not doing the right thing right now because mm -hmm. I am satisfying my feelings of my flesh that can be a good um, sign that you're not on the right track because we all have convictions. And when you feel it, you have to listen. So so I'm thinking sometimes we, we need to just get to a point where we uh, just discipline ourselves. So so we won't base our, our actions just on feelings. Yeah, like someone always told me you don't, you don't feel your way into an action. You act your way into a feeling. Mm. So wow. I, I Say that again. Believe, you don't, Say that again. You Say don't that again. feel your way into an action. You act your way into a feeling. So even though I may not feel like going to the gym, just get there. And once I get there and I see all the people and I see Jeff and I popped in that video, or I went on the page at 617, you know, I'm, I'm going to be ready to go. I firmly believe in fake it till you make it. Because when you start just acting out, eventually your body will respond to whatever you're doing. And then you'll find yourself feeling energized, mm -hmm. feeling motivated, feeling ready to go because you're already there. So sometimes you we have to do things until our feelings catch up with us. Right. Because we don't feel like working out, but then we yeah. work out, we feel better. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> we don't feel like doing anything, even showing up to church. We don't feel like, like you know, I could just, I could just, and the I can just pop <laughs> in, you know, and so, and, and to the point where the I can just become this huge hill and you just end up being in bed while you're watching Jeff Giant. <laughs> just, just a couple, cu cu I'm couple not of on statements. Saturdays, though, ladies and gentlemen. I don't do it on Saturdays. <laughs> All right. Philip says, Amen, Teresa. Our feelings are not enough to make the right decisions. Peter advised us to use minds that are alert and fully sober. First Peter 1 13. Our decisions must govern our must be governed by our minds and not our feelings. I like that. Rebecca says, uh, what's up, my wife, Rebecca? Uh, the mind is the rubber for the body. Oh, a rudder. Yeah, rudder. The mind is the rudder for the body that we control. Take away the, uh, the control of the mind, and we will be controlled by whatever feelings blown our way. Wow. Look at Jesus in Gethsemane. Not if it's possible. May this cup pass away from me. That was mm -hmm. the feeling. Mm -hmm. And then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. And then he went into the behavior. Because no wow. sooner than he made he made that, you know, whatever, then they came and got him with the torches and all the commotion happened and everybody fled. And he went to the cross. And then on the cross, after he suffered and everything, he said, you know, it is finished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> into my hands, thy hands I commit my spirit. So that feeling... Follow that behavior. He did mm. the behavior. He didn't, he didn't want to go to the cross. Mm. He, the humanity in him, the humanist in him, didn't want to go to be nailed on a cross. He knew he wasn't unfamiliar with how Romans did crucifixes. Mm -hmm. That was a common thing. They had it all the time. So he knew exactly what was going to be out there for him. But he followed it through anyway. So God help us. I mean, looking looking at Jonah, I when I think about feelings versus action, I think about Jonah a lot. Mm -hmm. He just did not agree with the mission. He didn't feel like these <laughs> people were worthy of his time or the message. Mm -hmm. And when we don't follow what is right and we just lean on our feelings, there's always a consequence that comes with it. Always. Mm -hmm. So, Karen, I'm coming to you. Um we talked about First Peter um, one thirteen. Could you read that? 
Are you able to read okay. that? Okay. Yes. Let's see here. Okay. But I'll, um, I'll state the question while you're looking it up. Peter understood that we need to control our minds and be one with Christ. Yes, we got to be one with Christ. Have you ever felt that you drifted away from God and wondered, how did this happen? In this culture, it is so easy to drift. We all feel this drift in our lives sometimes. How can we stay motivated to keep our minds fixed on Christ? And what are the benefits? That was First Peter 1, 15? 13. 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How many of you have been driving in the car and all of a sudden you see yourself drifting off the lane? <laughs> or you got somebody else next to you drifting off the lane. I was driving and it was raining down here in Orlando and a, a pickup truck and they start hydroplaning. And I was like, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. There's little children in the car. And he did. The angels had to stop whatever they was doing over here to go over there to help. And I'm saying sometimes we can do that in our own walk with the Lord. If we find in a moment where we are particularly sad and depressed, I'm not talking about dealing with maybe a loss or a grief or immediate instance. But when you see that, why am I just feeling sad? Or why am I just in such a bad mood? Or why does it feel like nothing, you know, when you kind of have that depresso mindset? That's the drift. That's the start of the drift. Mm. And then sometimes while we are drifting, we may get into an accident in the wrong lane. Uh -oh. Or we may find ourselves doing something that we, how did I get over here? We drifted. Mm -hmm. So what can we do with the drift? Jesus, help me. Help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I have a savior. You know, I was talking to somebody last night, 3 ABM boot, which by the way, I love these folk here. Some of the nicest people. If you're in Orlando, Come on over here to the Adventist layman services and industries, people trying to be Christ and the business owners trying to do Christ in the marketplace. All the medias, Christian medias, they're here. It's free and open to the public. So we were just talking about how, you know, if everything was going right in our lives, why do we need a savior? Why did Jesus need to hang on the cross? Because we are human. And as humans here on planet Earth, we are not in heaven. We're going to experience the drift. We're going to experience something that just comes on us that we had no idea. Like uh, Jeremiah said, you know, maybe it's not new, nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. but it's new to you. This experience is new to you. So God help us while we're in a drift to say, hey, I'm in a drift. I can't get myself out. I think sometimes we think that we need to straighten ourselves up mm -hmm. and then we can fly right. You know, that song, straighten up and fly right. Well, you can't always straighten yourself up. That's why there's rehab centers. That's why there's counselors. That's why there's preachers. That's why there's teachers. And we do not need each other to help each other do different things. And God uses all those mediums. And God uses his spirit. He uses the angels that he assigns to us to be able to move us along. And we can get out of the drift. It's like the tow truck. Think of God as the tow truck. If you fell into a ditch, he's going to get you up and put you back on a solid ground. You, you know, um, I was thinking about well, this this drift because this we're in, we're in part three we're in part three radical commitment that's what that's what we're talking about part three radical commitment and I was thinking about Jacob and how Jacob had to uh, pretty much stay committed and he didn't let go of God when he was wrestling with him he stayed and stayed he said no 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 I know I know you're you know you're a better wrestler you know I know you're you know, you, you made wrestling, you know, you, you are the extreme sports wrestling champion, but I'm going to hold on anyway. You know, I might get my, my, uh, hip, uh, dislocated, but I'm going to stay in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's called radical commitment. We have to stay committed and stay bound to Christ, no matter what's going on in our lives, even when we're drifting. Mm -hmm. I think about um, going back to like the discipline, 
you know, in anything that you do, sometimes you reach a plateau, whether mm-hmm. it's in your, your marriage or in a workout, or you just kind of are in a place where you, it's just a rut. You're just on, you're not going further, but you're not going behind. Um, you're not falling behind. And I always think about the scripture about, you know, doing a new thing, like God, God will do a new thing. And sometimes we need to do a new thing. Are we acting our way into a feeling? What are we what have we not done in our relationship with Christ that maybe we need to bring back to reignite the passion for Christ? So, you know, in relationships, sometimes you may try to do date nights or you may try to shake things up to bring back that fire. Sometimes we need to shake things up in our personal relationship with God that we may continue to hold on, not waiting for a feeling to come over us where we feel super connected to him. And then we start acting on that feeling, but getting connected to him so that we can start to feel connected again. Mm, I like that. I like that. So we're moving to our next topic. Uh, <clears throat> Alex Jones mm, uh, is confronted by parents who lost their children and pointedly, pointedly confronted him to say, you know, that this, that these events actually happened at Sandy Hook. He kept trying to twist the truth, kept you know, tap dancing all over the place. Why would some not exercise doing the right thing and and surrendering their will to the truth? Jeremiah, coming to you first. Well, because um, I like this this quote from this movie called Marvel, uh, The Avengers. When this guy Thanos he told this uh, other person he was finna get ready to destroy. He said, uh, "He said I'm telling the truth." And he said, "No, lying, just like breathing for you." And so most people like that, they will rather lie than just tell the truth. They will rather it's 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 more um, it's it's easier if you're a liar. It's easier to lie than to tell the truth, especially when it's time to pay for it. Now let, let me just give a little bit a little bit of background on this Alex Jones. Oh, wow. uh, Alex Jones, he has this yeah. podcast, it's very popular, multi-million dollar listening audience, mm-hmm. kind of far right wing uh podcaster. And but he just he tweet and you know he didn't believe, as he said, that <clears throat> this event that happened in Sandy Hook mm-hmm. happened. So that's a little bit of background. I, I listened to Alex Jones years ago. And um, I was, and some of the things he would say, I'd be like, man, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, no way that this is factual. Like, uh, the water turning frogs gay, that was a thing he had. Like, it was a lot of uh, misconceptions that he would have. But when he began to speak about the Sandy Hook massacre as if it was fictitious and uh, fake actors and uh, things that are not real, and these are paid people, and then people went to harass their families, and um, people, people make a living off lying. Um, they will, they will rather uh, get the monetary gain from the lie than mm. to actually deal with the the substance of the truth because they just have too much to lose. It, but they always lose. That's <laughs> exactly. And exactly. that's why the that's why the jury awarded the first time uh, it was four point one million dollars, and then okay. when they went to the civic. Civil court, uh, they awarded forty million dollars mm-hmm. to the families, and he still got other cases. Yeah, so, hey, you better tell the truth, or you might have to pay. Mm-hmm. So, 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 Jeff, why would someone still uh, play towards their audience? You know, you're an audience guy, even mm-hmm. at the expense of hurting parents. I, I, I just don't understand that. All right, here we go. Here we go. This man right here has a, 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 a talk show, mm-hmm. a radio a radio talk show. And for him, he's a conspiracy, conspiracy theory Theorist. type of guy, mm-hmm. okay? This is what he do. And that's he caught brand. something. That was his bearing. He's a conspiracy theory and that's what he does. Mm-hmm. And what happened, he got, got something which is totally straight up lie because we saw the people dead and he made it and he profit mm. off of that. For 12 years, yep. wow. for 12 years, he profited off of that. And I mean, the more lies he told, the more conspiracy and people was buying in and the radio station not going to do nothing who he's with. They're not because they are seeing 
the money come in. And yep. So the point with him is that once everybody listen to me really good now. <laughs> once you go to court and you put your hand on the word of God. All right now. Let me tell you. You lie if you want to, you going. <laughs> you can have all the conspiracy in the world, but when you put your hand, what I'm talking about here on the Bible. Well, well. and guess what? That <laughs> man got up there and said, You're right, it did happen. It's your <laughs> end. And yes, it did. All the conspiracy went away. Yeah. In 12 years, he made over 64, 65 million dollars mm. on that lie. And now all of a sudden he get in court and put that hand on the word of God and said, uh, it did. It's true. It did happen. So listen to me very carefully, people. We in our church have some people that are conspiracy people. Ooh. They tell all type of things about some people. I'll be like, well, where are they getting this information about certain things of See, that's going to happen or happen. We have that right here in our church and in different churches. People are conspiracy theory type of people. Mm -hmm. You don't know where they get the information from, but they want to give it to you and make you think about something like, how did that make sense? But some people buy into it. Yep. And they do. So as this man was doing it for 12 years, Look what happened to him now when it finally come. And guess what? The other man that we know that got orange hair and orange skin and all that, that said it never happened. He didn't lose. He profit off of that as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. He profit off of him and people are still trying to pay. And he's saying he didn't lose. He's profiting. Yeah. So when the devil gets you there to say, hey, I'd rather choose rubies and riches Mm. Telling the truth. Mm, mm, mm. I just put this up. Say, study to show thyself approved. We have mm -hmm. to study for ourselves. We can't just take some stuff from what man says. So, so uh, Karen, as a parent, what, what 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 do you think about this? You know, oh, and also the school psych. This has been a whole lot. All these school shootings, and we have to go through all kinds of trainings. I mean, the state of Florida just this month has mandated by July 1, 2023, every single person who's on the payroll has to be trained in mental health awareness. You know about that too, Teresa, yeah. which means in Orange County Public Schools where I work, 17,500 <laughs> employees have to go through a mandatory training. It's hours. Yeah. But it's clown who told everybody Sandy Hook See, there's a lot of damages that was done because if people mm -hmm. were really aware and listen, we may not have had some of the other ones to the same degree. Yes, but the yes. toll on parents, and you know there's happened here in Florida where there has been school shootings, it's a real, real thing. So, uh, and, and the guy still is. He, he, even after he put his hand on the Bible, he said, yeah, that's true. But did he not go off the air and say the judge... After he left the courtroom. And that the jurors are from another planet. He is caught up, like Jeffrey said. He is caught up in the ruby. He, There's a Daffy Duck there. card. Yes, he is. There's a Daffy Duck cartoon from back in the day where he wished upon a genie and he goes into this room full of treasures and he goes, oh, 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 oh. and then Lord of the Rings, my precious, my precious, okay, <laughs> my precious is the precious lie. That that guy is making all the money off of, and he's trying to go down like a dying frog. And it's like you say, we look at people like him and we say, "Oh, shame on him." But then you got people telling lies who say, "You know, the Lord is coming in 2022. We have to get ready. Where is your survival kit to be able to walk off into the woods?" I read the Great Controversy, and I don't read none of that. I'm just keeping it real. The, the Great Controversy during that moment. Okay, y'all get that book. Go online and look at the Great Controversy. It's got a lot of good things about history. If you want to know what's going to happen, what happened in the past, what's going to happen in the future, go online, look up Great Controversy. You can find it where don't get the anecdotic version or somebody giving commentary because that's where you get into these conspiracies mm -hmm. where people think, oh, it's going to happen right now. The Lord said he's coming like a thief in the night. That's Nobody what the Bible says. 
Nobody knows. And Jesus mm-hmm. even told his own disciples, only my father knows. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So all this stuff is because people are profiting. Have people profited on the Sandy Hook? Yes. Have people profited on the anti-vaccine? Yes. Have people profited on the end time events that people scare everybody and say the Lord is the... Yes. Mm-hmm. It's the Aren't shock they- value. It's, it's the shock, shock value, value and it's yeah. a value. Terrible. It's a value, yeah. a money people value. <laughs> right. value. So, you All know, the some money. of these things are real. Yeah, you're right. Some of these things are real. We know there's going to be an end of time. We know all that stuff. But can somebody, or we're going to listen to a human being map it out when the Lord Jesus said in the red letters that he himself doesn't even know? So mm. we just have to, Jesus talked about wolves and sheep's clothing. Mm. And that right, by the yeah. fruits, you're going to know them. And that's how yes. you have to look and see. Watch that track record of that person. What are the fruits is it of God? Because only good things come from God. If it's things that are hurtful to people, or harmful to people, look at the damages. Can you imagine mm-hmm. you lost a child? Think about Uvalde. If some clown after Uvalde, that's recent, went Mercy. in there when the woman was trying to call her husband, her husband got stopped. Coming in there with the rifle and they, the dude came back and said, oh, you're not dead. Boom. Okay. None of that happened. Those were all actors. Uh-uh. See, it's just evil of the devil. It and is. we know that he uses people, unfortunately, for his for his will. But God uses people for his will too. So, like you said, Dan, we need to study. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so so here here we go. We're we're kind of wrapping up. Um it's it's been, you know, it's been real, it's been enlightening. Jay, you you got some nuggets. I'm glad we can go back and watch this so I can write your nuggets down. Wow. You know, it's, <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> so, so, so the, here's the final, and you guys start to think about your uh, final thoughts and all that. Um, but yeah, someone says the pulse tragedy. It's just all these things. Uh, how do we persevere? How do we persevere during all these turbulent times, these trials, these struggles? How do we persevere? And in, 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 in um, when you guys. Think about that. Um, and before we go there, I just want to say, give a shout out as well to um, the story about the 13 year old got accepted. In yeah, God. Black minority young lady. And she's a product of Oakwood, Oakwood oh, University. I talk, man. Go ahead, Oakwood. Oakwood. Wow. Let's see what uh, her, her name. Somebody uh, give I think me that it's name. Lim- Lena, I think it's Lena. Lena, yes. something. It's Lena. I know it's Lena. Lena. Okay, <clears throat> but we'll we'll get that. Thirteen year old. Um, Those parents, they names, they just, they just, you know. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I mean, at thirteen, so we're talking about perseverance. And I saw, I saw the interview where she said, "Yeah, when I was young," because they said, "How did, how, how did you get motivated? Oh, yeah. You know, how did you get motivated to to do this?" Well, a lot of people told me I, I couldn't do it. But, you know, when I was younger, they said, when you were younger, She's still <laughs> said, yeah, when I was younger, I, I used to give a lot to uh, I, I used to give my time uh, in helping the homeless and, and doing a lot of community service when you were younger. That's so, right. hey, if a 13 year old is they told her you can't make you can't get no medical school at 13. You, you're too young, you know. If she can persevere and still got this huge, bright future, we can persevere through any and everything. That means you, Teresa, can persevere. You, Jeff Giant, can persevere. You, Karen. You, Jeremiah. All of us. Everybody on this thread, we can persevere. Rebecca said, never give up on God. And and, um, when you guys about to... um, Make your final statement. Make your final statement. I just want to read this from uh, one of my favorite uh, writers. I think she kind of sums up this. This is why we have to stay focused. Many never attain the position that they might occupy because they wait for God to do for them that which he has given them power to do for themselves. Mm-hmm. All who are fitted for un, for usefulness must be trained by the servant mentality and moral um, and moral discipline, 
and God will ass assist them by uniting divine power with human effort. Divine power with human effort. So that means that we're not in this alone. We can we can do this. God's got this. But when we combine the two, combining the two with divine power in our own efforts, we can there's nothing that there's nothing that we can't accomplish. So here we go. Uh, let's see who who's going to go first. In um, there, there's there's some statement. I have Jeremiah. Okay. Um, yeah, perseverance, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I believe the way that we can persevere as as saints um, is always remember what he said. You know. So whatever situation you face, remember what he said about it. You know, if you're if you're facing if you're facing something and you're having to deal with somebody that's lying to you, you know, the word of God says, "Your yay be yay, your nay be nay." Anything else come from the evil one, and you can stand on that when you're dealing with you know you haven't given a direct answer on things. And so it's just always remembering what he said, and you can't go wrong doing the right thing. And All right, I like that. Can't do wrong doing the right thing. <laughs> Sound like a song. <laughs> Probably in the 70s somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody just uh, jumped in from Uganda, East Africa. What's up? What's up, Uganda? <laughs> All right. So, uh, Teresa. Well, just to piggyback um, off of Jeremiah, uh, I was thinking of just holding on to God's promises. We <sighs> will never know more than him, ever. So the fact that God already has the plan laid out, he told you what was going to happen and he told you how he would be there to help you just mm -hmm. to continue to act your way into a feeling. Just continue to keep moving. You're always going to be in the right place as long as you don't stop moving, as long as you don't stop trying. And as long as you always let him know that you are willing to go the distance with him. Going the distance. Karen. I came across this one, too, from one of my favorite authors, counselors to parents, teachers, and students. These are things we need to know, right? Yes, yes. We are indebted to him who gave us existence for the talents that have been entrusted to us. And it is a duty we owe our creator to cultivate and improve these talents. Education will discipline the mind, develop its powers, and understandingly direct them that we may be useful in advancing the glory of God. So all of us have something. We need to cultivate it like a garden and be able to glorify God in our lives. Each one of us is special. There's, there's something that God needs you to do on this earth that only you can do. Nobody else can do it. So he's had you on this earth to do that for his glory and for a blessing to your mm -hmm. own life. Mm, I like that. Only you. God has that special particular purpose only you can fulfill. Jeff. All right. Perseverance, right? That's what he's talking about? He said? Perseverance. perseverance. Final thought. Give final it to final us. Thought. <laughs> Here it is. Truth, wisdom, and understanding. That's it. Truth is the truth that we have that we believe in God. And he give us the wisdom to know, to discern, to know what it is we are dealing with. And then to understand it and move forward with it. Truth, wisdom, and understanding. I love that. That's like love, peace, and soul. <laughs> Truth, wisdom, <laughs> and understanding. I yes. like that. I like that. Beautiful. <laughs> don't, don't, don't laugh at me. <laughs> he just went to me. He just went to the whole thing over Don Camillo. Oh, he went to Don Camillo or something. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Once you go get the Soul Train dancers out, the Halloween <laughs> dancers out, why? Let's see who knows. Chris is thinking it. He's like, I got that from day. Anyway, anywho, <laughs> yeah, can we have the Browns pray us out of here? All right. Hey, Amen. Well, that's about it. Father, we come before you, thank you for your love and for your truth that was shared on today. We ask and pray that every mind and heart and spirit that it touched, may you have your way 
And may every seed that you wanted to be sown be sown, Lord. We thank you for who you are. We continually pray for safe travels for Karen as she go to and fro throughout this land. And pray for all your saints that may you keep us safe from both danger seen and unseen. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Wow, amen. you guys have been, been awesome as usual. Wow. You know, I just love, love you guys from the quad squad. You guys are so our regulars. Like the link. Like the link. Six seventeen. Six seventeen. Click that link. Click that link. So we'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna give everybody give give you guys a t-shirt. You guys want one of these t-shirts? Got one for you. I think I'm gonna get a t-shirt by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, check us out. Give us, a, give us a response at quadsquad249 at gmail.com. Leave your comments. Right? We'll see you next time. See you, Jeremiah, Jimmy, Jeremiah, James, Jimmy, Joe, James, Jimmy, baby. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>